I am Dr. Ann Davis, and I must admit that my passion is working in the Hebrew Scriptures because that Hebrew is a language of God. God is infinite, <laughs> and His language is infinite. It's just, it's amazing when you work in, in Hebrew with the, the depth that you can see in that language. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you into the Hebrew alphabet. Since I certainly believe that, that God inspired the holy, the, His Holy Word, that there is spiritual meaning in the letters. Certainly the ancient Jewish sages believed there was spiritual meaning in the letters. So that's what we're going to do now. Let me take you into the first letter, which is Aleph, and I'll read you my introduction. Jewish tradition attributes spiritual meaning to all 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. You will discover that the depth of meaning is infinite, which reflects the nature of God, who is the author. We will begin with the letter Aleph, of course, because that's the first letter of the alphabet, and you will experience the emerging depth of its uh, spiritual significance. Now, Helio Hebrew, uh, before the formation of letters, there were pictograms. Pictograms are pictures that convey um, a sound. And the early Paleo Hebrew that eventually became the letter Aleph was the head of an ox. So I, I think I think it's very interesting to see this, this Paleo Hebrew um, pictograms because it helps us understand the spiritual meaning. The ox is a very powerful animal. And so it represents strength, steadfast, and, and, and being yoked together, all right? Because you, you can't do the work of using your strength unless you're yoked together. So that I, I find this very interesting, and I show that to you, the, the Paleo-Hebrew. Let's take a look at the power of the number one. The number one stands alone because it cannot be divided, all right? Can't divide it. The number one stands for God. Well, that makes sense. The number one contains immovable power. All right. So let's take a look now at where the number one first appears in Scripture, and that's creation account. We have uh, the number one is uh, day one is Yom Echad. You read from the right to the left. Yom is day, Echad is, is our number one. I put it in red, it's our number one. So in the creation account, we read, God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning. Yom Echad, day one. Now, this is really significant because what we see at the very beginning of the creation account is that there is a separation between God and an and anti-God, right? We can call it Satan or the, the world the, that, that contains the evil as, as contrary to God. Now, the first letter, of course, is Aleph, and I, I'm showing you the, the letter Aleph. And the ancient Jewish sages uh, were, were fascinated by the, the shape of the letter. And let me show you. There are two little appendages here um, uh, on the letter Aleph. And they look like letter Yud, which I'll, now you can either say Yod or Yud, either one. I was taught to say Yud, so that's what I'll say, the little letter Yud. So you get a little letter Yud on the top and you get a little letter Yud on the bottom. And what they suggested was that the upper Yud represents heaven, the lower Yud represents the earth. Now, in between those two little appendages, there is the letter Vav. You see it, the letter Vav? And the Vav, according to the Jewish sages, connects God in heaven with his people on the earth. I find that really, really, really powerful because throughout the ancient Near East, the this connection with the spiritual power of God didn't really didn't exist. Let, let me show you here in, in, Babylon. in Babylon. They built a ziggurat, which was a, a temple, and we we it, it's no longer standing. But we know about that temple. We can reconstruct it because of the writing 
on the cuneiform tablets, which I, I show you here, the cuneiform tablets. So what we have here is we have seven layers with stairs leading up to, to the very top. And you see the stairs on the outside, and then you go inside, and the stairs continue until you get up to the very top. So it's it's very high to get try to get up to God. How how do we get up to God? It's very high. Uh, at the very top is a temple, and only the high priest could communicate with God. The people could not communicate with God. They had to give things to the high priest so the high priest could communicate for them. And that's very different from, from Israel. And Israel, well, I'll show you in just a minute. I want to show you about Israel because it's very different from the ancient Near East. Here is, is uh, Moses and the burning bush. And we read, the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have given heed to their cry. So our God, the God of Israel, hear, hears us and he wants an intimate relationship with us, which is very different from the ancient Near East, because hear, heed to their cry because of their taskmasters, for I am aware of their sufferings. So I have come down. Oh, I, I, I've got chills. I've got chills just thinking about it because um, the God of Israel, our God, comes down to us. I have come down to deliver them, my people, from the power of the Egyptians and to bring them up. Now, that's bringing them up. It, it, it's symbolically bringing them up to me. So God comes down and then he gives us instruction on how to go up to him, okay, to bring them up from the land that are good and spacious land to a land flowing with milk and honey. I just, I can't tell you how powerful that is. Now, I want to um, show you the, the, the Jewish phrase, tikkun olam. Only mankind has the ability of recognizing and imitating his creator. This is in the Hebrew scriptures, thereby bringing holiness into the world. So as we strive and grow in maturity to become holy, we grow closer and closer to God. And then the holiness that, that, that we are exhibiting is bringing holiness into the world. And that's what Tikkun Olam is. Tikkun Olam means repairing the world. And how do we repair the world? We repair the world by by growing closer and closer and closer to God in a whole, holy and holy and holy condition. And that's how we repair the world, because we shine out the, 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 the wonderful goodness of God from within us as we mature in holiness. Now, let's take a look at insights that we get from the letter Aleph. Well, Aleph is the number one, the first, the beginning. One cannot be divided, so it stands alone with power. And of course, the number one represents God. On day one, God separated light from darkness. Now, this is the, the, probably the, the underlying theme of the entire holy writings. Separating light from darkness. We, we're in the darkness and he's bringing us into the light, which is, is, is in God's presence. So that separation of light from darkness is the foundational principle throughout all of Scripture. Our God is the only one among all the gods who comes down to be with his people. And furthermore, he is giving us instruction through the holy writings, and he has sent his son, the Messiah, to, to, to guide us on coming up to him. Now that's that's symbolically coming up to him, all right? So, so the earth is down and God is up and he comes down to give us help so that we can come up to him. It, it, it's really powerful. Now, let's see, the Bible Interact website, BibleInteract.com, offers, I think it's well over a thousand teachings. 
Uh, we have different categories. We have a unique look at the gospel, the New Testament. We don't go into the New Testament like, like you probably learned in the church. We're really seeking for that deeper meaning, especially deeper meaning in the language. And we also work with the culture of the time to help understand the meaning in, in the gospel. About Bible times is very important to understand the, the, the surrounding of what was happening when, when uh, Yeshua was talking. Biblical languages is a very important part of what we do. We offer um, online instruction both in Hebrew and in uh, the Koine Greek, which is which is the New Testament. Um, we we have blog articles which are which are very uh, popular. People like to read our blog articles. We have numerous courses that you can take. They're online self grading, so that you can take these courses on a, a numerous topics about Scripture. Hebraic studies is probably our most important area of, of study, and at the last time I looked, I think we had well over 700 teachings of Hebraic studies. Let's Talk interviews are a lot of fun as, as we interview different people about their ministries. Podcasts we, we offer, and you know, I like the podcast because I can listen when I'm in the car, when I'm out walking. <laughs> uh, we also have publications um, that you can access on Amazon. And the remnant is a topic that is, is in my heart because God has led me to really work hard on the concept of the remnant in Scripture. Now, um, you can um, go to, to the, our courses in reading Biblical Hebrew. We have a beginner course, an intermediate course, and if you can go, if you complete the intermediate course, you can tackle the advanced course, which is, is quite advanced. Uh, but I like to, if, if people get into that advanced course, I like to, to interact with them and, and work with them. And you can find that on BibleInteract.com. So we'll have more fun with the Hebrew letters uh, when I do the letter, the next letter, the letter bit. Shalom.